So we'll just go around, um, you know, just, just, uh, it's really just to introduce ourselves to just uh, have a little bit of a corridor about how things, how's, how's everything with, with you and Tana. And um, so we'll just head around there, but this is impressive of the table over there. Don't think you're getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just to. Uh, oh, oh, so sorry, something happened. It's okay. Um, uh, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Are we on YouTube or what? <laughs> oh my goodness! No, no, no! It's not good. Are any of the staff talking today? Up here. Yeah. Mom, do. Why are they just in front of it? Otherwise, cut them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, don't worry. We'll we'll just ignore what's going on over yeah. here and we'll carry on. Yeah. yeah. It, technology is either your friend or your phone. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the moment, it's not cooperating, but that's okay, we'll carry on. Um, Jerry, well, morning. Uh, morning, you? Yeah, morning, um, uh, yeah, look, you know, me, um, I'm not I'm not in a I'm not in a coat. 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 i <laughs> so, um, and just for a refresher, you probably all know, but I'm I, uh, one of two councillors for the, the Wi Fi country, so that's uh, Cambridge down to Morco. Um, and I'm an, um, an appointee on, on this um, game. Our um, apologies from our chair, Pamela Story, who's, who's actually the official co chair, and our deputy co chair. Um, Bruce Clarkson, who's also a deputy chair of the council as well. They're, they're both, um, well, I think Bruce is at the um, EDS conference and our chair panelists in Australia. So, um, yeah, apologies from them. So, um, yeah, look, um, good to be here and uh, looking forward to a, a constructive um, three years um, working together to on, on areas of, of, of mutual benefit and, and areas where the council can, can help head our off the trust. So, I'm um, um, no um, morning, I'm Mikael Downard and I come from Topo, originally from the Mokonga Taiaki. Yeah, uh, grew up there, but um, been in Topo for 30 years, uh, married to Tania, got five, five kids, uh, three girls and two boys. Um, the oldest being 28 and the youngest being 18, just turned 18. Um, so this is my first term on as the regional councillor. I've been on council and deputy mayor and total um, before, and been in many. Still am on many committees and trusts and stuff like that down there. So really involved in the community. Love the total Rotorua uh, region. Um, I never move out of it. So a lifestyle I believe that um, might not earn as much as some of the other big places around the world, but uh, well. You know, far more and um, yourself to grow up in this area, I think, the best and privilege. So that's why I try and put as much back into the community that the community is uh, giving out to me. So we are looking forward to learning as much as I can and, and trying to do as much as I can and getting some of the money down to actually doing work rather than get caught up in policy and, mm. and 
and make more that's probably the, the biggest um, thing that I want to do. Oh, kia ora. Welcome. Uh, tēnā tātou, uh, whakini well, uh, wala ahau, um, he uru no te aroa uh, te haurangi iwi, um, and uh, i te taha o tōku mama, i te taha o tōku papa, um, he uru no nga te tahi, he tāi toke rau. Um, so I've been a uh, trustee now at Tarot uh, for three and a bit years, um, and just recently um, been re-elected on the Tuharangi Tribal Authority, so it's the Tuharangi Tribal Authority that yeah, elected us on um, to the Tarot Board. Um, so like yourselves, in it for another three years. Mm. Uh, so I work so, uh, my day job in the freshwater space now for the last six mm. years. Just recently, over the last 12 months, been leading uh, the three waters for the NCB and the Secretariat. Um, so, yeah, the freshwater space is um, sort of reforming, and it's, um, as we know, it's on pause at the moment, um, the three waters, so it's the waiting to um, see so going forward. But I think uh, there's a lot that Alfano uh, and we are doing in that space at the moment in freshwater, so that's sort of also an agenda, and um, yeah. Um, I'm one of two councillors, uh, Māori ward councillors of Wakato Regional Council. And um, this should be my day job, I think, but <laughs> I am also the chair of Rekawa and also the chair of the Iwi Māori Partnership Board for Rekawa at this time. So that's who I am. Nice to be there. Oh, and I'm the ultimate today. Um, I'm not part of the committee, but I'm not part of the board. Oh. I'm, the, I'm the ultimate for Carrot. I'm, I'm William um, Morena, uh, and I'll just be the democracy board and pretty much the secretary for this meeting. Sure. Thank you for your service. Oh, okay. Kapai. We have some people on the screen here. Would you like to say Morena and introduce yourselves? I'll go first, perhaps. So, uh, yeah, uh, Tenakoto Katoa, um, Ko Peter Wishart uh, Takuinga. Um, I'm uh, currently I'm calling in from Hauraki, from Thames, uh, my kainga, and uh, I'm a senior policy advisor. Um, with Tikonahira Obrahi Awaikato. Um, I'll be speaking to the Freshwater um, paper this morning. So, kia ora katoa. Oh, kia ora, Peter. Tēnā mm. koutou, may I go next, please, cheers. Um, call Karen Bennett, ho. I am in the Chief Executive's Office at Waikato Regional Council's Office in Hamilton, 
Thank you so much for allowing me to join you from Hamilton today, and I'll be presenting our strategic direction for the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, kia ora tato, ko Hannah Craven tōku ingoa, uh, i tipu ake o ki kimureti, uh, ke i tamaki makaurau ahau e noho ana. Uh, he kaiwhakahaere kaupapahere o te kaunihira arohe o Waikato. Um, hi all, my name's Hannah Craven, I'm a Senior Policy Advisor in Strategic and Spatial Planning for Waikato Regional Council, although I currently live in Auckland, so that's where I am today. Kia ora. Kilda, do we have anybody else? If not, I'll wind up the Fakafananga Tanga. I thought I saw a couple of different names mm -hmm. up there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do, did I see a James to Pitti? Sorry, I'm on a bit of an angle. I can't. Yeah, there he is. Ah. What are all my James? Good morning, my name is James Winston. I'm, I was just joining in on the meeting. I will be the democracy advisor going forward um, for this committee. So I just wanted to say hello um, and enjoy your meeting. Thank you. Can I quit, James? OK, <laughs> if that's us, we're going to move on. Um, he honore, he kurore e ki te atua, he maunga rungo ki te, ki te whenua, whakaaro pai ki nga tangata katoa. Ake, ake. Uh, tēnā koutou, uh, ko te, uh, ki te, ki te, uh, ki te taha o, te, o toku mama, uh, ko Ngāti Tahu Ngāti Pāua, um, ko, ko te taha o toku pāpa, he, he tonga, uh, o ia. Um, Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, look, welcome everyone. It's, um, I don't know why it feels a bit strange. I think we just haven't had a hui here mm. in it <laughs> for no, a little no, while. No, no, and I feel, no. you know, I feel like it's, yeah. um, but I think we'll all warm up, you know, yeah. once we get the flow on, yeah. um, you know, we'll be, we'll be fine. I guess it's just trying to sort ourselves out. But um, I do want to uh, thank you all for making the effort to come over. Um, you know, it is a, it is a partnership, it is a relationship, so it's really awesome that we're able to host you today here at the Te Arawa River Iwi Trust um, office. So, uh, yeah, and just wanted to say as part of my um, uh, whakawhanaungatanga, um, even though it's not my day job, we have a uh, really big fundraiser tomorrow, and I'm really excited about it, so we want to do some fundraising to uh, how, you know, we're going to fix an area over at the, um, uh, that's, area that's been impacted, hopefully a small rural area like we are, and um, and, and actually go over in Tautoko. Um, so we've got a big fundraiser, we've got a, a bike and classic car ride mm -hmm. and um, Hani and lots of raffles, a lot of, lot of uh, different uh, local businesses like Rotorua, Taupo, uh, Reparua um, have really come to the party and supported. So we're just, uh, you know, hoping praying that we'll get some people and we can get some funds together and actually um and uh, actually just just pick an area and just go and see how we can uh tow top or and what that looks like um because you know i think uh we can't forget um about what's happened you know it's easy for it to stay fresh in our minds when it does happen but it's you know they're in there for a long haul they've got a long hard road um long hard road ahead of them and um you know some of the sore stories that you hear and it's from all walks of life it's uh, you know it's impacted so many different people that um that you just uh you think wow you know this that they've lost their home they've lost everything and some of them don't have insurance and some of them do but you know there's just a whole lot of different scenarios so i think uh you know if we all pull together as a as a, as a nation, as a, as a, as Aotearoa, um, and look at, uh, you know, what we can do. Um, Tokurodo and, uh, uh, or what is it? Tokurodo, uh, 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 for um, your basket, my basket and your basket will, will make money. So um, it's just about that, us getting together, even though it might be a small, 
you know, a, a small um, uh, koha or, or gesture, when you put it all together, at least it shows that um, it's it's given in love. You've got a good day for the couple of horse, so you'll be 15 months. Yeah, I, we, we really hope so. I'm really quite excited about it. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Mm. We're not in control of that. We can just only do our part by putting it out there and hope that people make the most of it. So, um, kia ora, in that vein, um, I just uh, like to um, really, uh, I think I'll go through and I'll call for the apologies first. We seem to have uh, a few a few piece, people missing. We've got apologies from Perry Marks. Uh, who do we have from so, the council? Um, Daniel Story and Bruce Clarkson. Mm. Okay, and is Chris? So I didn't. Chris didn't, did he introduce himself? Chris McKay. But does he not normally no, attend? Staff so he wouldn't. He, he wouldn't, wouldn't um, put his apologies in, but yeah, he is um, the CE. Okay. Yeah, all right, we wouldn't normally take apologies from Chris Cuplight. <clears throat> and um, I do put pressure actually on our on our senior uh, management to to be here. Um, I think it's really important um, that we do have um, support uh, in that in that area, but and not taking anything away from you, Neville. Um, it's fantastic. The people, you know, the really important people are here. You and minute taker and uh, ever, whoever provided lunch you know we all um all got a part to play so um but uh oh thank you do we have a second yes mate thank you kia ora. no i've got that down here right now so the res we i'm going to pass a resolution that we appoint um councillor kneebone as a coach here this holy place. Yeah, Delia. So Delia and then and then Delia's moved and has moved to second. Oh Delia's going to move. Yes. Okay. Oh sorry I did say that I would move. But uh Delia is moved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as chair, can, can I just have a quick bit of Marley, sorry, uh, in, in the terms of reference under quorum, you want to read that? Because uh, th this this is actually going against the terms of reference. No, not not, not, not to call in the chair, but oh. your quorum who should be here. So we need to make sure that our terms of reference yeah. can be, it says in here the quorum is made up of a co Chair. Chairperson or deputy, deputy. from that organisation, and one less. So the co chair is not here. We mm -hmm. don't have a deputy yet. Hey, that's that what right? I, that, that was one so, of the questions. So we need to maybe look at. Um, well, I can't do it. There's only two of them here. But you know, we, we need to get this right. And hang on, what it says the committee shall consist of eight members, one being the co, co chair, but the quorum just says two representatives. So no, it says right here the quorum is made up of co chairperson or deputy from each organization and no less than one other what that's what page are you on uh, what page number you seven on? number seven you're on page four can i um yes just for correctness so that we can carry on that by by appointing an acting coach here today you've met the um the quorum the quorum the the yeah yeah okay so, so we need to we need to update that quorum sentence to say that that uh, appointing a co-chair on the day will, will satisfy that quorum. Because and can we just note that the Waikato Regional Council haven't appointed you um, co-chair, a uh, deputy co-chair. Have these got? No, sorry, I might have been wrong. Have we had? Well, have we? Have we what, my mum? Oh, if you have a look at it. Well, see, it's not in here. Yeah, yeah you yeah, haven't in the quorum yet. I did check out um, all the council appointments documented the first to confirm yesterday that we haven't gone through the process of appointing a deputy. Okay, so, um, we can certainly look at doing that, um, regional council, um, so that um, it would be more clear to be an alternate to the co chair position going forward. Um, however, just to give you reassurance, for today's meeting, given that we have only been an appointed and acting co chair person for this meeting, um, I'm um, comfortable that we've satisfied what we've set out in terms of this. Yeah, we can. I'm comfortable with it too. So, this is an interim, mm -hmm. interim co chair. Right. Okay. 
sanctuary because I know WRC they pull out the water and it suits them. Okay, I, I, actually you're right. I did notice that, but I thought that uh, I wasn't quite sure when, whether or not you had appointed your your coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless, neither of them uh, are here today. Okay, confirmation of agenda, and um, you have a, the agenda in front of you. Yes, that page there. Cool. And uh, do we have anything that we want to uh, add? Or is there anything we want to change on the agenda? Um, I have something that I'd, I'd quite like to discuss, and that maybe we'll, we'll, if it doesn't come up, if there isn't the opportunity uh, during the hui, um, <clears throat> we'll discuss it afterwards. And that's that's around what does a partnership look like? That's around what 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 is it that we actually want to be achieving at these hui, and um, what does it look like going forward? I think that's really important. I think that's particularly important just given you know the reforms, the RMA reforms, the mm -hmm. water reforms, particularly where we can be advocating for each other and through this to identify sort of areas within or that we can be working together as a partner. So with that addition, I'm happy to move the agenda to the business of the hui. Second. Do we have to speak up for the mic? Or? Probably, if we have a nice thing everyone can hear. And um, <coughs> I just ask if people everyone can hear. Okay. <coughs> yeah, that's okay. Now. Okay, so thank you. So we've satisfied that on two Street. Um. Hope you the so if you do the, if you do the, you know, uh, can people online hear us okay? Which numbers do you want to do? Yes, I can hear everyone all. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I can hear, I can hear too. Cool, sweet. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, item four, uh, dis disclosures of interest. Um, and are there any disclosures of interest that haven't really been disclosed? And noting that as regional councillors, we've already declared most of our disclosures, but I guess if anything's pertaining to the work of this committee, we need to disclose those. Not seeing anything, so. Um, Cool. Um, we'll confirm there's no additional disclosures of interest and go on to number five. Right, confirmation of previous minutes. What page is that on? Uh, that is that is on 16. Thanks, so if we can head over to the um, I'll take it. Can I take the minutes as being read? Uh, are there any um, changes or um, comments on the minutes? It's really water, yeah, it was, it was, but I can't believe it. You and Katrina were there, so. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm, I'm happy to, yeah, uh, to, to move that they be confirmed. I was there. Thank you. Good to second. All in favour? Aye. Carried. Thank you. So that's the minutes from the. Were there any items from the previous minutes? My apologies. Uh, that we want to raise that's not already in the agenda. No, because I think the actions that we had done were done over the time and taken care of before yeah. us. Not long after, remember, yeah. we had a big conversation on email. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I don't okay. think so. Yes, from my yeah. perspective. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to. Um, the Waikato Regional Council's draft strategic direction report. So, Morena Karen, I'm handing over to you, I assume. Thank you, Co Chair. William, would you please put up the presentation from the file? I won't talk to every slide, but um, there may be some useful slides in there because we have been speaking to many stakeholders, EV partners, 
uh, members of the public, since you received the draft in your agenda pack. And so there are some refinements, some improvements, and some additional goals that have been put in for us to discuss. So if we could go to the next slide, please, William. We'll just look at where we are in the process. So the 10 year strategy for 2020 to 2030 has been reviewed and updated to articulate the council's direction for this triennium, 2022 to 2025. And the direction is useful guidance for the conversations we want to have at HUI such as this, and also to help us um, guide staff, our stakeholders and partners, and also to focus and prioritize activities coming through in the long term plan. So to date, we have looked at the macro environment and our operating context, understanding those drivers for change. We have had a number of workshops with our councillors, with stakeholders, with staff, with subject matter experts to identify those key strategic directions that we would consider and work with others to achieve. The three year priorities that Council have discussed and have put forward for discussion with partners and stakeholders have evolved from the last triennium to a degree so that we are better placed to meet these drivers for change. So the um, fundamental environmental priorities have remained, the water focus, biodiversity, biosecurity, and coastal and marine. And Council has evolved the other three priorities from just a broad brush climate approach to actually be more focused on the transition to a low emissions economy, just to provide a, a more, um, if you want, acute focus on the key shifts that are required to achieve net zero targets. There's also been a shift from infrastructure to sustainable development and infrastructure. And this allows us to explore and deliver on the need to look to a more sustainable, resilient society and also the infrastructure to support into the long term. And finally, the other shift has been from transport connections to that broader focus of community connections to actually recognise that transport is about enabling people to participate in society to the fullest, but also allows us to look at the social aspects about the need for community cohesion when we are seeing um, people splitting and looking for reasons to separate rather than to work together in a pro-social way for good outcomes. Um, next slide. Please. So through the feedback process, we have had great support for the priorities and goals with some suggestions for strengthening of the wording of the goals and inclusion of new goals. So William, please, if we could just nip down to slide seven, we can look at the priorities. Thank you. So those are the priorities. These are the ones that are in your pack. And just if I could um, say thank you to you, Chair Evelyn and um, Joe, your CE, for meeting with our Chair and CE. They were really um, pleased with the most constructive conversation about our strategic direction and look forward to more frequent and ongoing conversations. We've had also meetings with all the, um, well, still to meet with you, Katarina, but the Chairs and Chief Executives of our EV partners and also with our stakeholders. And we've also got a public forum and we've invited members of the public to comment in these. So broad support for the priorities and lots of really good suggestions for the actions we might work on together for inclusion in the development of the long term plan. And one of the um, things we would like to explore with you if this is something that would be something you want to explore, would be to have further workshops with EV partners to co-design actions to achieve the goals. So 
if we move on to the next one, I can perhaps just highlight some of the key changes that have come through from conversations that you will see in the final document that goes to Council. So following on conversations through Joint Management Committee meetings and directly with EB Partners, the text that prefaces the water section <coughs> in the draft strategy has a much sharper focus on Te Tūru Whaimana and Te Mana o Te Wai and Te Mana o Te Awa. The goals fundamentally are the same. And so you will have those in your in your pack. They stay the same. Now, just through you, co-chairs, I'm not sure how you want to direct this. Should we go through all these and then perhaps conversation afterwards? Or did you want to stop after each of these priorities? There are six. I'll be guided by you. So I'm just going to check in. You've obviously met with Karen yourself and Joe. Delia, where are you? Because we we're obviously relatively familiar with it. How mm -hmm. would you like to sort of <clears throat> in, in terms of um, sort of providing feedback on each of the priorities. Yeah, yeah. Do you want Karen to stop after each one, or to just do the whole lot and then have a bit of a call you at the end? Um, either either way, I guess. I'm I'm keen. To, I've just got some questions on why, but um, whatever suits. Okay. Else well, the, let, let, we're a pretty <laughs> small group, Karen. So we're, we're, and so let's just pause after each one briefly and, mm -hmm. and see what comes out. Very good. Thank you. So I'll, I'll pause it at this and just um, please any questions or comments much appreciated. Um, I guess through the chair, thanks to um, I guess just my first question was: Is there any order to the specific order to the priorities that have been um, identified? So what what determines? Um, I guess when I, uh, I imagine these priorities will also work through also into the long term plan. What sets the order of the priorities? Um, is it water first or? Um, the is water, it, it... Oh, sorry to interrupt. Just to to let um, or to give some shape to it. Water and biodiversity and biosecurity are indeed the number one priorities for all our stakeholders. Having said that, when it comes to the prioritisation and funding, all of these proposals will be as I said, I'd like very much for us to look at some way of workshopping with partners, but they will be put through um, a robust prioritisation process through the long term plan. But for the now, water and biodiversity and biosecurity are certainly our stakeholders and our partners' priorities from what we've been um, told. Okay, no, thanks, Karen. We'll keep keep rolling. Thank you. The next slide, please, William. So here's the biodiversity and biosecurity, and the, what we're wanting to achieve is people working together to protect and restore our unique local native plants and animals, and the indigenous ecosystems they live in. And so these goals are uh, a wee bit different from those in the pack, mainly because they've had to um, be turned around just to give us, again, as you say, prioritisation. We need that accord in place before we can actually have a prioritised strategic pathway. And then support and empower communities. Um, that includes uh, also now the inclusion of Tama species. That was a request that came through strongly in all the feedback to make sure we were specific there. And then there's the biosecurity goal at the end. Pause. Um, um, I guess just a question and sort of around consistency. We see Te Mono Te Wai as sort of the mechanism that provides sort of an order within why. Um, so, you know, as we've seen with the MBA, uh, with these, with the RMA reforms, Te Oranga Te Taio is seen as the framework that potentially mirroring Te Mano or Te Wai provides mm -hmm. for the sort of order. Um, is that something that um, you have or our has been sort of suggested as for consideration in applying this to the biodiversity and biosecurity or the federal indeed. aspect? Yes, indeed it is. Um, that's the conversation that the teams will be having with the partner agencies and as they go through the strategic pathway. Yep, 
Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Next slide, please, William. So this is the transition to a low emissions economy. And. Gosh, it looks like a lot of text on the screen there, so I hope we have a moment to read that one. It um, focuses attention on those sectors that have the greatest opportunities to reduce emissions. These are our largest emitters, the ones that produce the largest um, volume of emissions into our atmosphere and where we can have the greatest gains. So we've been looking at transport, looking at agriculture, looking at energy. And then we're also looking to ourselves because we have a responsibility to work in our own business and through our own supply chain to reduce emissions. And um, we have to date reduced emissions by 46 percent and we're on target to reduce by 70 percent by 2030. We will continue to drive hard there. I should pause. Um, so that's sorry, this is just a question uh, in terms of your um, your measurements. The 46 percent is that the Waikato regional area. Yeah, just, I beg your pardon, that's just our own council, the Waikato Regional Council's corporate activities. Oh, right. yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, just another question. Yeah, yeah, another. Is the Waikato Regional Council um, sort of area, how is that tracking in terms of um, emission reduction? Compared to other areas, yeah. other regions, yeah. Um, so actually, one. we have um, made, I'll, I'll say there's been no reduction. We have Huntley Power Station, of course, that has been um, pumping out a lot of emissions, keeping the lights on, keeping the power going. Um, so there is a lot of work being done in that area, both with Fonterra, Fonterra and um, Genesis, to look at alternative forms of fuel to actually power their factories and the plants. Sorry, Gemma, can I just? Yeah, no, I just got Michael, Mikhail coming in, um, Karen. So, Thank Karen, you. with projects like uh, the Tohara and the Tohoka geothermal projects coming online, does that counteract those emissions or what happens there? You know, how does that work out? I'm sorry, Councillor Downer, I don't have yeah, the full details yeah. there, but clearly, wherever we can transition from uh, fossil fuels to renewables, there will be a benefit. Sorry, I, sorry I'm still trying to understand, you know, just what, ha, what's the baseline? We, how do you work out whether your emissions are going down or going up? I, I understand transport, but um, when we talk about Huntley and then, um, you know, that uses yeah. coal to other um, entities that are in our region that happen to be all in our region, where does that baseline start to say, well, your emissions are this, and and if something else gets built, like a 900, 900 million um, geothermal power station, does that counteract it or no? Yeah, we have a um, we we have a regional GHG emissions inventory that we do every three years. We are about to publish the current one um, in. We're getting the first draft in May, and that will be finalised in August, and we've. This will be the third one we've done. So we have nine years now of trends that we can show where the emissions are um, originating from, where reductions are being achieved, and we can um, measure those, we can report them, and we can work with the sectors. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll just ask. <clears throat> just just wondering how realistic the target is. There's they're, they're aspirational targets, but they are also realistic, and we have we have tested that. Okay. Um, so what you know, just the thinking around the table, and and I don't know whether um, to adopt 
to, to adopt these changes, what, what are you doing uh, like within council to be able to, to make that transition or to, to um, meet the targets? To meet our corporate targets? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we How have do you feel that out? Today. How's that information going to be disseminated? So we, uh, we publish um, our own corporate emissions and these are audited and certificated by Tuatu, and these are published on our website. So we have a corporate emissions reduction plan and we have an internal team that monitors these and looks for initiatives to reduce emissions. We have internal communication strategies to support and we are of course transitioning through our own passenger vehicle fleet and looking for new ways of maintaining our flood pumps, which are probably our highest emission source. And that's a challenge for us. And the other area that we're continuing to focus on is to keep the um, flights, the number of air miles that we travel to keep those down, because obviously during COVID, we saw how we could effectively communicate this way without having to take lots of plane trips to Wellington. And that was a really effective way of reducing emissions. No, that's good. Thank you. Um, I guess it's just hopefully that um, thinking will be adopted by, you know, a, a few councils and it's just around like sharing. Do, are you guys, you know, do councils talk to each other and, and look at how you can, uh, you know, better connect or sort of feed each other off each other and mm. see what you're doing so that it's more of a, a collective, you know, now looking at a, more of a say landscape um, yeah. view rather than sort of more just sort of straight up and down because this is you know it's it's kind of siloed a little bit yeah. and um, like it's from from an iwi point of view or even from um, you know those that are, are stakeholders it's quite hard when you uh, when you straddle a number of, mm. of councils and it and it's really trying to get that um, a sort of some synergies I suppose across across councils but I, I think um, you know, it's a great start. I, I like what you're, um, what I'm hearing, um, and I just think, well, um, councils do need to be leading the way in, in in this sort of stuff, and it's and it's really good, I think, for councils to be talking to each other, and um, kind of kind of sharing their ideas. Um, the other thing that I wonder, um, and that's around some of the uh, encouraging. Um, I suppose uh, some of the geothermal um, power stations to have have other, you know, because they must have secondary steam and things like that, and having other businesses that that uh, help to reduce the um, help to reduce the um, what do you call it, the uh, gas emissions. Mm -hmm. So I know that uh, at um, Ohaki they were looking at. Uh, because Ohaki Power Station is one of the biggest emitters. Mm -hmm. And um, they were wanting to build a number of um, uh, tomato, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the glass, glass houses. And that was actually going to uh, mitigate some of the emissions. So mm -hmm. it's just sort of, you know, I guess looking for that new kind of um, mm -hmm. uh, industry where or not industry but the the new thinking around um how we can kind of mitigate uh whether it's um sorry Evelyn do you Karen do you talk to people like uh Turupaki um you know uh trust I mean they've been leaders in that you know they've created a worm farm they've got you know you get you know hot houses mm. um and you know they've got geothermal as well do you talk to those people Indeed we do, and they've been very generous in inviting councils to learn and, and to actually visit their business. And we took the regional sector, so all the regional council chairs and chief executives and other senior staff were taken to Tūrūrūpaki as part of a regional sector tour. And um, it was, they were extremely generous with their time and their knowledge. So yes, yes, we do, councillor. And um, if I may just respond to you, um, Co-Chair Evelyn, we do have a lot of work cross councils and I do 
I don't think it's a secret that our chair of the Climate Action Committee is currently trying to set up a forum for all councils in the region to have an opportunity to have these conversations with iwi partners and also um, youth. So rangatahi, so we're looking forward to progressing that and coming back to you with further information very soon. And just the other point I'd add too is that um, along with um, with emissions from power generation and agriculture as well, it's, while it's not the regional council's responsibility to regulate that, where there's opportunities for us to help those stakeholders mm. reduce their emissions, and ag's a really good example in, in terms of all our, our biodiversity and mm. riparian funding, then absolutely we're trying to work really hard with those with those stakeholders to help facilitate that uh, rather mm. than leading mm. this action. I guess that's true. I guess it's um the I guess the concern that I've seen across in other regional councils um is where um you know and, and seeing that there's you guys have designated air management areas mm. um where and perhaps where this might be again I'll go back to the frameworks that are being used to sort of identify priorities. The issues that we see for ourselves is some of our marae some of our um, homes who use fire as a means to um, sort of heat, yeah. particularly during winter, um, some of the regional councils are actually targeting, you know, homes to reduce that. Rather, it would be good to sort of see a framework that for us, we need to first protect our people's health and well-being within their homes, within their marae, and where the regional council are facilitating that conversation, um, across the different emitters that perhaps um, reconsider prioritisation or in reducing those emissions, that perhaps it's the industry and the agriculture areas farming that are sort of can, that those reductions should take place. Yeah, okay. Or yeah. our, our homes, our marae are um, impacted. impacted because the impact in that is that they're asked to swap out mm. these heating um, what they call heat pumps and the like, and they can't afford to run them. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the priority perhaps in considering management of the air and emissions. Mm. I mean, different, different emissions, of that, course. That yes, yeah, different yeah. emissions and different impacts, but if there is a way to measure to understand mm. that, the actual priority to be targeted at the industry, Farming as opposed to our own. But not only just follow on that, not only from that, it's a, it's a way of life too. It's not only just eating, it's cooking. You know, a lot of these families, you know, they either got access to do their own firewood, so there's a saving in, in that mm. way, mm. but they also have access that if power goes off, they can still survive, they can still cook, and they can still heat their whanau. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, I know we've got high. Um, 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 Air quality um, topo as well, but it's where the monitoring is done as well, um, because you know it's it's kind of like you know we're in a volcano, so you know it's, it gathers more, and there's still a lot of people that use fire as their as their mm. heating so, and cooking. Yeah, I, I I don't particularly think it's the fires that are the problem in theory. Yeah. It's what they're burning, you know, um, education yeah. around what they're burning is, is important. There's nothing wrong with them burning wood. Um, as long as it's dry. So, yeah, and that's what and, we've been working and, with. Stuff. Yeah, and that's what we've been working with uh, some of our people around, especially Tokoro. And if you remember, the air quality in Tokoro has dropped. Uh, we don't get cold as often as we used to in Tokoro, it's newer than the wood, but it's teaching those people that you cut your trees down today, but you don't use it till next year. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's education there. So, but you're right. And with our, our um, what do we call them? Our family homes that we've been doing through WRC, yeah, uh, and healthy well, homes and yeah, stuff. Yeah. That was all part and parcel of helping them uh, by making sure they were well installed. And, and we did that for a few years. And that's a partnership of the district council. So yeah, okay. you know. So, so, uh, and when we started off in in Hamilton, and of course we went to Tokoro. The next one we went to vulnerable towns, and and yeah. and of course it depends on the location. So we have done quite a yeah, and we are obliged by law um, to monitor that PM, PM, yeah. PM emissions as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So I guess yeah, so it's like the emissions across. Yeah. You know, not 
sort of does yeah. plug-in, I guess. Oh, yeah, look, yeah, absolutely right, but I just do want to confirm that when, when we're trying to um, get, get um, for example, houses from top of the to change the heading sources or we use drive firewood, mm -hmm. that's only in scenarios where, where, we, where the science is, is, is quite clear that that's what's causing the, that yeah. particular matter. It doesn't come from agriculture, but absolutely. Yeah. It could be an opportunity why there may not be some national direction in this that sort of the DRC sort of can fire it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, William. Next slide, please. Coastal and marine. Um, this is an area that has been beefed up a bit through this strategic direction. And just looking to focus much more keenly on the sensitivity of the receiving environments. And also, we do indeed have a lot going on with communities Iwi and Hapu to, to do the integrated coastal and catchment planning and restoration. And there is an intent through the conversations that this is beefed up over the next three years. Now, the other bit of feedback, and I'll just comment on, was that last goal there about partnering with communities to deliver a future-focused coastal plan. Feedback, well, that's just an action, but in actual fact, it's a goal and a, an achievement in itself to achieve an agreed coastal plan that we can work together on and, and start seeing some results. So I think it's a fair goal and others would like to see it stay there. So I will just pause there for any comments. Um, yeah. I guess just, just where I've seen um, sort of changes um, and inclusion in the legislation for three waters through to model to why the coastal um, waters, estuary and, and wetlands have been included um, as a discharge point. I guess, so how has WRC sort of considered that in terms of the discharge of fresh water into these areas that may be um, so impactful. Yeah, thank you. Good question. And that was the reason why that was emphasised the sensitive receiving environments because that picks up on that point that's come through that legislation and also the importance of, and, and this is me in my translation, I've missed out a very important piece there about reducing the harmful impacts of land-based activities. So that's that third point. So these goals are all cognizant of that um, point that you've just raised. Thanks, Karen. Oh, oh, can sorry. I just ask? No, that's okay. Through you, co um, co-chair. <clears throat> um, what's what's the or the thought around mixing of waters when you know discharging of that? Is that what you were? Is that basically yeah, what you were so saying? Not so much the mixing, but as a receiving environment. Yeah, but it's also the mixing of fresh into into salt water. So you know, what is are there some uh, is there some thinking around that and whether it's acceptable? And what do uh, Tangata Whenua think at that point? You know, around that, are there is there consultation around around um, how they view that of having a discharge of, of fresh water into into, uh, into the sea, yeah, into the estuary. Yeah, well, well unfortunately, I mean, that's part of nature because all of our river mouths are at the end of the sea. But well, it's an well, increase, isn't it? It's well, it, it only increases uh, on what comes down the riverway, you know, because we don't control the water flowing into our rivers, as you know. But um, the water, with the rain and stuff that's happening, yes, there would be an increase of water volume going into our our seas our problem is trying to ensure that what is going down the river you know mm -hmm. but all, if you consider what's happening in hawks bay and all that debris from tree that if it doesn't stop somewhere it's going to end up in the sea there, yeah. there's no doubt about that so so how do we control that it's all part of natural nature mm -hmm. so so our coastal plan i think is is quite it's really innovative you know but it's it's really hard to control what happens within the nature world. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think, so to who do we talk to around the estuaries will be Raglan, uh, Porto Waikato, in our area, Moko. Hey, that's about all yeah, our coastal areas. Oh, okay. 
for all of that. It's yeah, going to be a Captain's right, but our focus is on ensuring that contaminant loading um, at a That's at level that the environment can, can assimilate, yeah. which is no different to everything else we do around the river. Okay, so it's not added, it's not an increase of, um, of water that would normally go in naturally. Mm. Well, not okay, because I mean, it comes, really, it no, comes from, as you said, it, it actually comes from that uh, well, tributary only, or would yeah, the only, naturally um, find it. The only there. unnatural increase I would be aware of would be the Tomadero divisions, you know, which which were put in place a long, long time ago. Especially for the Waikato, but then of course you've got, um, you, you've got, uh, what's those, Waiho, and you've got the, the other rivers, I'm not sure where they start off from. Yeah. But one of the things that we were worried about uh, when they were looking at taking all that water out of the port was drying out that area. <laughs> we didn't envisage that two years down the track we're going to have big huge storms. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 so, because what goes in the river is water wise, level wise, it's also coming out through allocations. And right now, up to a couple of weeks ago, the water allocation out of Waikato was great. You know, it wasn't overloaded. Mm. So I guess there's a little bit of balance about what comes out of our riverway and, and uh, what we take out. So it kind of balances itself. Mm. And as you know, the Lake Topo can't get any fuller than this way anyway. Yeah, and where does right. it go? It has to come down our river. Yeah. Um, so there's a little bit of this, but you yeah. know, at this point in time, like you say, we don't manage, we don't manage that. No, we we try to look after what actually mm. goes into that waterway, so it doesn't end up in the sea. But this coastal plan is a little bit of that, is a little bit of understanding the erosion. Uh, it's also like places like Kaio, where you've got the river right here, and then you've got the sea, and the big storm comes and they clash, and then you've got the town smack in the middle. You know, mm. so that's that's this type of stuff that. We're working really diligent around how do we see the land that's in the mm, in the train. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Thank you, William. Next one, please. We've just got two to quickly run through before we wrap up here. Thank you. This is a, a really important area for all of us, the sustainable development and infrastructure. And it really is focused on that resiliency and um, developing intergenerational well-being and working with nature and um, you'll have heard the term nature-based solutions so this is an area where we will be working with communities to understand risks and we are halfway through our regional climate change risk assessment which will support this work and then the next stage of course is understanding those risks and working with communities to um, plan for and adapt over the long term. Now, the change other than wordsmithing and tightening up these goals is the addition of infrastructure, transport infrastructure into this goal. And I think this has gained even greater currency since Cyclone Gabriel, where we have seen whole communities just com completely um, cut off because of the damage to their, their networks. So that's one that's in there and perhaps isn't in your, your book right there. So I'll pause for any comments. Um, you. Um, your first bullet point, Karen, ensure infrastructure in the region is planned and provided for, and that is economic sustainable. Give me some explanation around ensure infrastructure in the region is planned. Well, what do you mean by that? Be this because, is, sorry, the regional council. So, so give, give me an example and then maybe a, it'll clear for my, my question I might have. Okay, so it is part of the regional policy statement and in a way it's also us establishing the platform for the, uh, the new Strategic Planning Act, which will give us the spatial plans, which identifies where we want development to happen and where dumb development shouldn't happen. And so it gives us that overall picture of how a region will develop, how it will accommodate growth, and where its transport networks go, where its hospitals, its schools, um, its energy corridors. So that's, okay. that's what that refers to. Yeah. If you remember, um, what was that town we went again? What was that one we were building? 
the tunnel they build in there and we oh anyway. I, oh with sleepyhead is we yeah we yeah. remember sleepyhead and that infrastructure. Remember how we we went against all of that with the council and all that and we didn't get anywhere. So so is this particular goal is there really some measures in there that the regional council can do? Or is this wishful thinking because a lot of it is pertained to the local council? Mm. Indeed, yes, but change is in the wind and um, we are anticipating, it is a strategy that the changes will enable these conversations to take place in favourable environments. And we did we did have achieved some things through that or any wide process as well around transport, as I recall, didn't we, Karen? Yeah. Sure. yeah, there were compromises made all around. I, I guess what I'm trying to say, Karen, is please, uh, th this is this is great, but there are areas in there that will be questioned around. Is it totally WRC or is it in relationship with our local government, uh, our TLAs? Um, because, you know, we don't give any consent out about where a building is going to be built. Our, our consent is around whether or not they're allowed to dig it up. So I just want, I don't want to see blurred lines in here. So people uh, think that we are the ones who are uh, allowing a whole lot of stuff to happen. Uh, because, you know, sustainable development and infrastructure development is a funny word. Um, and, and, and it looks to me, if I wasn't a, a councillor, that, that we do a lot of things out there and then they go bad. Like where we put towns and teams, like we're just going to open something up there shortly. And I asked a question of them, I hope we're not building that on the water for them. They said, no. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? I'm talk I know that our, our pumps are great. I know that our flooding infrastructure is fantastic. It's just been proved that it works really well. If that's what we're talking about as far as infrastructure and development is concerned, then we should make sure it is said in this goal. OK, that's me. Through you, Chairs, if I may respond. So with respect to our own infrastructure, Councillor, um, we are really addressing that at point three, where we talk about the sustainable flood management and land drainage infrastructure. So yes, that's the council's area of responsibility, but the council is also responsible for providing a lot of the information, um, the evidence base, the understanding, and also bringing communities and the region together to do this planning at regional scale over the long term. So that first bullet point is to enable that facilitation, the planning, the evidence base, to give us a good map for the future. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Karen. Thank you. Um, last one, please, William. And the community connections. Um, as I mentioned, this started off as a transport goal, but as councillors discussed our society and where we're heading, it was evident to them that they really wanted to expand this into a greater focus on social cohesion. So we've got the sustainable transport options there in the first two goals. And then the second two goals are about community and about more pro-social activities and opportunities and building resilience through knowing who we are. So that's what those latter two refer to. They also speak to a lot of the feedback we've had, and I think that was to your point, um, Chair Evelyn, about local councils working together, and so that came through very strongly. So the goal is that local councils work together with their communities and make it easy for participation. And then the other point of feedback that came through was actually why can't a regional council's science and um, information is a really valued asset for this whole region and that people want to be able to use it and we should make it possible to do so. And that's that. And we'll pause there. Thank you. Sorry, co-chair. Um, 
You've got down there in point two. Sorry, I'm on a different page. I'm just reading the uh, summary. Um, develop a deeper understanding of what our communities value most. Um, how are you going to do all of this? Like, you know, I'm really, I, I love the Fakaro and, and um, you know, really a lot of this stuff for me is kind of what what should be happening anyway. Um, and, and probably is to a certain degree. Um, I guess my real burning question is around the, so we've got the why, but it's around the how, what's the implementation going to look like? And when you have quite a, a broad de develop a deeper understanding of what our community is feeling most, I mean, really, you know, we should have a good understanding of that. I, um, I'm going to say that we did have a hui, uh, you know, with Waikato Regional Council around the, um, at Ohaki Marae, what was it, the Te Mano Te Wai um, mm. implementation, uh, freshwater implementation, freshwater uh, management. And um, I have to say that we kind of got a little bit grumpy. And uh, we said, you know, come on, Council, we have told you time and time again to put resources into our iwi environmental management plan to explain what our values are. You know, we don't really want to be going over the values again. Um, and I, I see this and I think, well, you know, we should have a really good understanding of what our community values are, because I doubt whether they've really changed. You know, values mm. don't really kind of shift a lot because they are a core principle of what we're about and what we do. Um, and, you know, in the why we do it. So those those values are, are, are quite embedded. Um, it's really, um, how, how do you propose, if what you're doing already isn't working then, if you still don't understand those values, what are you going to do that's, that's different? You know, and all of this, I have to say, Co-Chair, I'm looking at it and thinking, and it's great, don't don't get me wrong, and I can see that there's a, a you know great amount of effort, but how is it going to be implemented? How is it actually going to be, how's that change firstly going to be uh, communicated within the council? And and how do you get everyone on board and how do we get everybody on the in different sectors? You know, how do you get your you're talking your, your comms on together. It first has to come out from council, really. If you if you don't all buy into it and you're not you're not walking the talk and doing it, then it's hard for people on the outside to look at that and think, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy into that because <laughs> you know it's it's and sorry, it's probably from my um CSG days as well around People don't mind change, provided it's not going to change again in two, five years' time. You know, there's a lot of resources that get spent. In, I mean, you know that, Stuart. We, we were together on that, and that was one of the main complaints, wasn't it? And I thought it was really valid. People don't mind change. They don't mind... Well, they do mind, but they can see if they <laughs> if they can see... But if they can see the benefits, and there actually there's some science behind it, and we're not just plucking things out of the sky and, you know, um, that they can see that it's, you know, some research and things have gone on behind there, then, you know, they're a little bit more prone to implementing change. The project can really acknowledge that we've got to make some changes. Well, yeah, yeah but they do, and, and I think that's fair enough, yeah. because they've, they've, we've, we go back again in five years' time and say, well, actually, that change, we're going to now change that change, and people get poor out with it. Um, but I, I guess I've, I've probably, you know, put a, a whole lot of thoughts into that. But I, I'm really interested in to see what what you're going to do differently around the how, around the. Do, do you want to have a, a, an initial response here? Oh, thank you. And I take, I agree with your points completely. We have worked closely with our partners. We do have an understanding of what's important and we do certainly heed what we've learned through your um, EV management plans and strategies and I think the connection is we need to understand what people what people want to respond to because we are noticing and we all know this that there has been a decline in the participation in 
dem democratic processes. So what is it that we can actually work with to have greater engagement so that we do have people taking part in these community decisions and actions? And I think that's the point. We're looking to work with our local councils, to work with community groups, to see what is it that we can do to inspire people to actually take an active interest in these decisions that shape their, their communities and the way we live our lives. Um, it's an ongoing ambition. We all know that, but it's something that we definitely honest intentions that we will address. Well, I think so. I'd add if, if you look at the events of the, the summer, there's clearly some big changes that need to be made. And um, if I think of my own situation, I've been an elected councillor for um, geez, 12 years now. I'd be lucky if I get a phone call every three months if I think of the myriad of annual plans and long term plan consultation processes I've, I've been through. The percentage of people in the community that engage with that is very, very small. Mm, yeah. So, so we're saying, hey, we've got to perhaps see if, if there's another a better way that we, we can do this, you know, because we are going to have to make some significant changes, and um, and you know, um, some of those changes are going to be really impactful, um, particularly around our, our coastal communities. Um, mm, I guess for me. The concern and probably the previous slide that um, Katsadaina has addressed is the grey area and whether actually the planning path is who's under the remits of regional council. Um, you know, with what we understand of what wider community is, you know, the, to ensure the um, improvements or well being of the tile or the environment. Um, I guess, you know, in that sort of a spatial planning um, bill may provide for, I think, you know, councils to be working together. But I guess for me, the concern is but your role is to ensure improving the outcomes for the environment. You know, I guess it just how this plays out, whether it's safe to be in the strategic direction. I imagine um, that maybe just a question um, in this, when, particularly when you're using words economic. And you know, I guess up to this point, regional council sort of needs to put, sort of consider in the consenting process. Those issues are not um, sort of brought forward. So, and I'm not taking it on board too. Yes. Any more, Karen? But but the big gold around uh, this community connections, there is a big element of transport within this, Karen, as you you know that that. Our rural areas and and um, the community connections to, for instance, Wall Street mm -hmm. are, are just out of kilter. Uh, if you look at even transports uh, that are out there, as you know, over the many many years we've had rural lawyers debating around all of that. But if you're going to add the climate emissions to half of the stuff, mm -hmm. uh, then then how does that, yeah, how does it make it good getting from, say, uh, Tokoro to Hamilton? You know, because, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm not quite sure what community connections means as far as transport is concerned. It's always been being a Kororo at the table that, that it wasn't good for rural areas. Um, I do also understand, uh, you know, improved safe access for affordable, low emission, blah, blah, blah. That, that, that's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, but, you know, all of this, all of this, as far as the community is concerned, from my perspective, is irrelevant. They just want to get on the bus and go to town. They're not going to check and see if that bus has got emission free, whatever. So, so all of this is going to be the job of us to ensure that it's right. All our community wants to do is wake up in the morning and be able to go to the Waikato Hospital or the Wairua Hospital with no hassles whatsoever. Um, don't stay there for five hours because the next transport back is five hours later. You know, so I, I think for me, the community connection that as far as transport is concerned is a big piece to play. Um, everything else that's in here, it, it kind of 
it's relevant to all your other goals as well. You know, there's a lot of the rest of the goals that fits into some of this. But when it comes to our community connection through transport, then I think uh, we really do need to look at that part within this goal as well. Kia ora, um, Are we just about through that one, Karen? Look, we are done, thank you. And I just wanted to let you know next steps. This um, will be considered for adoption by Council next week. And following that, we would um, look to set up opportunities for co-designing actions to achieve these goals. And I think that's a, a really great place for us to um, work on the issues that you raised about so the importance of addressing um, the entire island in all of this of how do we uh, you know really deliver to our communities and how do we achieve in bite-sized pieces the actions that will give us positive outcomes across all those well-being areas and, and Karen, to the, blue, the blueprint for that next part of the process still it's still pretty open whether or not it's by this JMO mechanism or separate hoes, etc. I would like to think we would be using all of those yeah. vehicles to have these conversations. Yeah, cool. Okay. So, so Karen, when you do have these conversations with community or with the iwi or whomever, do you also have the the local TLA in that same hui? Uh, because I don't believe Iwi want to be talking to two different two different um, councils around one kopapa. Uh, mm -hmm. and you know is that what we're doing? So if you if you went to come here, for instance, you would have um and Tufarito Topo council sitting at the table as well. I haven't actually gone so far as to approach others yet. I want to just get this finished so that we can then start planning, but I will take that on board because it sounds like a good suggestion. Well, uh, uh, only, only because if, if this is our strategy and our TLAs are all inclusive anyway, and, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about how do we have a relationship with our TLAs, well, I think together with our iwi or whoever partners you're working with should have them all at the table because if we're talking resources and, and uh, capability and capacity, we don't want to go, we do not want to go to five different councils and get it wrong with each council. But, you know, I, I, it'd be good if we can look at something like that, though, Karen. Definitely. Please. Thank you for that. Oh. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. For and sure. thank you very much for all your time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Karen. Um, now, we have to the resolution, don't we, William? So, yep. yes, I'll move that the report be received. Dale is happy to second it. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Yes, Karen, and I'll hand over to Phil Acacia for the next one. Okay. Uh, overview of resource management system review, Legisl legislative uh, reforms. And we have uh, Hannah, Hannah Craven. So, Hannah, if you want to. Um, Ore Nakoto, again, that, that's me. I'm, my name's Hannah Craven. I'm a senior policy advisor in strategic and spatial planning for Waikato Regional Council. Um, so, yeah, I've just got a brief presentation for you today on the government's resource management reform program. Um, although, from the discussions I've already today, it seems like some people in the room maybe already have quite a good understanding of the bills. And given that my presentation sort of summarizes the report, I can either just take the report as read in the spirit of time or I'm more than happy to present and you can absolutely feel free to interrupt me if I'm going over information you've already heard. So you got I those slides? Um, I believe William was just about to share those slides. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I think if you just go through your presentation. Is this done? No, that's not my slides. Sorry, do you want me to just share my own slides? Uh, yeah, that might be better. Yes, thanks. One second, sorry. Great. Can you all see that? 
Yes, thanks. Yes, fantastic. Okay. Perfect. Um, right, so this is the most substantial reform of the resource management system in the past three decades. Um, as we all know, the Resource Management Act has governed a lot of what Regional Council does, and that is proposed to be repealed completely and replaced with three new acts, two of which were released in late November last year for submissions. Given that these two bills made up a combined 900 pages and contain some drastically different content to the Resource Management Act, we found the submission timeframe quite tight, but uh, WRC was fortunately able to pull together a team from across council staff to analyse the bills and write a detailed submission on each. Uh, we lodged submissions on both of the new bills in early February, and our chair and chief executive presented submissions to the select committee in the following weeks. Uh, we understand that government's intention is to pass these bills before the election this year, um, so that would be around August, although I did just see in the news in the last couple of days that that may not end up happening. Uh, it's also worth noting that the third piece of legislation, which is the Climate Adaptation Act, hasn't been released yet. We're expecting to see this sometime before the middle of the year. So just a little background on why the government decided to reform resource management legislation. Uh, the RMA has been in place since 1991 and has since undergone multiple amendments, but it is still critiqued that it misses the mark in several key areas. The reforms are aimed at addressing five key issues, which are one, the environment continues to be degraded. Two, planning is expensive and takes too long. Three, approvals also take too long. Uh, four, the response to climate change has been ineffective. And five, the present resource allocation system is not compliant with the principles of Tetaditi. So today I'll just provide a quick overview of the key concepts of the two new bills and what we at WRC understands this means for local government and iwi hapu and Māori. So as shown in the left column in the diagram on the screen, uh, the Natural and Built Environment Bill, which is the real messy piece of legislation and the key replacer of the RMA, has three sort of main layers to it. Uh, the bill itself sets up the purpose and outcomes of the new system and the decision-making principles that those acting under the bill must follow. The second layer is the National Planning Framework, which will contain national level direction on key resource management matters, including freshwater, biodiversity, infrastructure, etc. Uh, government hasn't yet released the first version of the National Planning Framework, but we know that it will essentially look like a combined version of all existing national direction. So that's the national policy statements and national environmental standards, as well as some new content for matters like infrastructure, cultural heritage and climate change. The National Planning Framework will also be responsible for setting limits and targets for resources at a national level and providing direction on how to resolve conflicts between environmental outcomes. The next layer down is the Natural and Built Environment Plans, which are combined plans, one per region, to replace existing district plans, regional plans, regional coastal plans and regional policy statements. And then below that, there will still be resource consents, although the form and processes for these has also changed a bit. Then to the right, we have the Spatial Planning Bill, which is a much smaller piece of legislation, but with completely new content. Uh, its main purpose is to set up the process for preparing regional spatial strategies, which will sit alongside the natural and built environment plans to set out the vision, objectives, strategic direction and priority actions for a region over a 30 year period. We're almost envisaging that these strategies would look like a regional policy statement, but with an added spatial element. And then underneath these are implementation plans and agreements to implement the strategies. So the purpose of the new bills is different to that of the RMA. Instead of being about sustainable management of the environment, the new purpose is to enable use development and protection of the environment and to recognise and uphold te oranga o te taio. We also need to protect, promote outcomes for the benefits of the environment, comply with environmental limits and targets and manage adverse effects. These components are, need to be considered equally rather than to be in conflict with each other. 
The front end of the bill also sets out a number of system outcomes which plans must provide for. There is no hierarchy established between these outcomes, which is something we raised concern with in our submission. Not that there needs to be a hierarchy as such, but that there needs to be national level guidance as to how to manage cases where outcomes conflict. The bill also sets out key decision making principles that persons exercising powers under the Act must follow, which include increased responsibilities to recognise and provide for the responsibility and mana of each iwi and hapu. Um, are we going to ask questions at each slide or do you want to go? To oh, them? absolutely. Feel free to interrupt me at any point. I, I, I just I need them to make sure they understand some things. Mm -hmm. okay, can you go back one more, please? Sorry. Um, how do I get back? Yeah, that point. Uh, so first and foremost, the purpose of that, the purpose. So does does that come under the banner of the regional council, or, or all of this right hand side? Yeah, you know, to enable the use of one, two, three, four, and then be recognised and uphold. Is that what the regional councils look at, or do is that what we need to do? This is what everybody will need to do who um, acts under the Natural and Built Environment Act. So it will be regional councils, district councils, um, any other body that performs functions under the Resource Management Act. So landowners applying for consents, you know, all of the decisions made relating to resource management have to come under this purpose. Okay. So, so, and then in, in bullet point four, it's got a uh, provide for the responsibility of the mana of each iwi and hapu. So, so iwi at the moment are the authority of, you know, it's an iwi authority. Then under them, you've got hapu. How are you going to distinguish the difference? How, how does this bill distinguish the difference between an iwi and everything that comes under that? Because the majority of iwi authorities today um, not all of them, but the majority of them have. That's where their hapu is sitting. So, right. so how, do you, how do you dif differentiate between not you personally, but this folder between the iwi and then the hapu? Yeah. So I understand that. I'm I'm not actually completely certain if the bill defines iwi and hapu, but if it doesn't, which I'm not sure that it does, I think that that will, you know where the various responsibilities for iwi and hapu lie will kind of depend on iwi and hapu. Um, there is a new, I'm, I'm going to touch on it a little bit later, a, a new entity under this new bill called the National Māori Entity, which is going to be an entity run by Māori for Māori um, to advocate for the... So, so in our session, that, that we put up, WRC, did did we not put anything in the submission about um, differentiating between iwi, hapu, māori, because... We did, actually. We had... A... Yes, so I don't think... Yeah. I brought it up because there's, there's, there's a problem with the wording. There definitely and, and, was. I'm just going to have a little look back through our submission. Yeah, Apologies. Don't, don't, don't do it here, but let's carry on. Okay. I just want to make sure because you are reading to something that is supposed to be kosher. And if you can't answer a question like what is the difference of each and one, then then that, that's a problem. It, it's not it, it isn't super clear through the bills that yeah. that was part of our submission. That's why I asked within the submission of WRC to go back as one of the submissions to define what they meant yes. by that. And obviously they either haven't or we didn't follow it up. I think to touch on your point though, Katarana, when we all made submissions and then we had to work through um, you know, what they the bill or what they uh, had proposed, it, it felt like they hadn't actually taken on board what yeah. we had said anyway. So from a from a point of view, um, most of our settlements are enshrined around iwi authority. Like mm. that, those settlements are with an iwi authority and yet they're not recognised in here. So that's the issue that everyone, you know, most mm. iwi have had is the lack of recognition around iwi authority. Mm. And and also the loose description, you know, there's, there's, there's too much room in there. It's not um, defined enough. They're not clear enough on what they mean. So there's lots of wriggle room in there. 
Um, but it is really important that, um, and everything's left up to interpretation as well, isn't it? So it, depending on how each council is going to interpret how to implement, then, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a very difficult job for council um, to be able to, you know, work within those guidelines. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I feel for us. I feel for yeah. us um, here as, as council, but then I also feel for the area as well. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. because we put together about making sure that the river, for us anyway, the Waikato River will, will get better and better and better as we go along. But while we're doing this in the 80 years, we said we'll do something with healthy rivers, that hasn't gone anywhere. We now have a reform on this, and we have a reform on that. We argued at the WRC about the, the national water policy, about how that affects them on all the way. So, yeah, you know, sometimes. But, but the treaty partner is the iwi. That's the problem. And in this priority thing, I heard you say number five was something about the Treaty of Waitangi. The Tiriti of Waitangi, I heard you say, is one of the five principles that, that happened to re-look at why that, they needed Yes, to. why they've looked at it. The problem with that, though, like I said, is the partnership with the Crown is Iwi. It's the Iwi who it's became awesome. treaty settled. Not the Hapu. Mm. This, this there, is bad. We I mean we haven't had any response back yet on what how submissions have been received, but I, I completely agree with you. The the bill is quite vague on those points, and I think it's because they hadn't that the bill was put out very quickly, and I don't think that they'd thought everything completely through before needing to get it out for some consultation to get some feedback back. Is the impression I have. Before you read into this one, that number four bullet point is already a hassle. You know, we've already argued that already, and yet here it is again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that co-management, co-whatever, is not everybody's cup of tea within the mainstream world, but that does not suit us. At all, and we put in the that was put to the to the table, but it's it's still obviously there. Oh yes, this this sorry, I am just summarising the bills as they currently are. I'm not talking about what we've said in our submission because um, we definitely did stress that there was an issue with that particular bullet point. But this is currently what the MBI says. Me, we're on, we're on forever. Um, right, yeah. I'll just cover a quick few. Uh, a few key areas of interest. Um, regional planning committees are a new entity or body under the new system, which will be responsible for preparing the plans and the strategies, as well as setting allocation approaches for freshwater takes, diversions and discharges. These committees are to be made up by the authorities in a region, including Iwi and Hapu. There must be at least six members with a minimum of two Māori appointees. We particularly stressed in our submission that determining a committee composition for the Waikato will be more than challenging, considering it has 12 local authorities and an enormous number of iwi and hapu. Uh, these committees are supposed to be jointly funded by local government and then supported by a host local authority and secretariat, which is supposed to be decided by all the authorities in the region, defaulting to regional council where agreement cannot be reached. Uh, specific to Māori, there are some key changes in the bills, particularly uh, Te Tiriti must be given effect to, whereas the RMA said that the treaty must be taken account of. Uh, te Turi Whaimana is specifically referenced and must be given effect to. There is to be a new national Māori entity responsible for ensuring the above. Uh, planning committees must also initiate engagement agreements with Māori groups in its region. A particular regard is to be given, given to iwi management plans and matauranga Māori. Uh, and mana responsibility, kawa and tikanga is to be recognised and provided for. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Just before yes, you go, go back. Oh. Thank you. 
There we go. Thank you. What was I going to ask you? Um, <laughs> whereabouts are we in this whole process? So submissions were went out, the second lot of submissions went out February. Uh, yeah, February. Yes, um, yeah, that's correct. So where does that leave us? So, you know, again, um, as Katarina has outlined, a number of iwi uh, enter, yeah, entities uh, would have submitted. So, and, and it is against some of these uh, particular, in particular. So you've got there that the Na National Māori Entity monitoring the above and input to MP. Is that their only function? Oh, no, I think they've got a, got a few functions, but um the the main ones yes are ensuring that titiriti is being given effect to through the entire system i mean it's no it's no small feat of these functions that they've the national maori entity has been given um and then inputting into the national planning framework which is that national level direction are the two main main functions yes okay that's just a question hannah have you um read any of the EV submissions uh, I have read a couple of them, but that was probably a little while ago, and I they probably have gotten a little bit mixed in my head. I've read a lot of submissions, and I've listened to quite a few of the presentations uh, to the select committee as well. And unless they implement that into the bill, though, our submissions. Uh, yeah, but I guess um, in, in his, as you raised earlier, there have been some issues around the key, the national Māori entity, or how. Um, iwi effectively through the Tiriti is, is reflected through that and you know some issues were raised around that Māori entity and that it asserts a manner of iwi at race. Um, I guess just sort of understanding what the issues are and thinking particularly where how do you report here um, where is the mana of each iwi and how who are affected in these actually is not where a lot of the iwi think the mana is upheld in these um, sort of proposals. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I guess just as, as you're working through to understand perhaps at place where Iwi, what Iwi are thinking, be good to sort of familiarise yourself with those. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Should we have representation on the, via the council to be able to relay that, you know, the, the um, Iwi advocate? Yeah, yeah, advocate. I think we always try to advocate mm. for, for Māori, but the, this is part and parcel of um, uh, so some of this kōrero that's in EA, Hannah, we did comment on in our remission, uh, in our submission, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, yes. So, so, mm. um, so within the council itself and probably mm. at the table, we try the best we can to ensure that we are involved with Māori mm -hmm. one way or the other. Here's why we've got a awesome group who run by those two at the back. Um, but but when we do a submission um, on behalf of anything, the the componentry of Māori iwi is done by the table, and that's where Tipo and I and any of us we yes. put in, yes. and, and we come with that overview of it, yes. hoping that we can upy our, our iwi if they need us. Mm -hmm. You know, when they do their submission, the, the best thing if they, they for them is nine times out of ten is is get in touch with us mm -hmm. to help them in this area. Um, when they are doing their submissions, yes. otherwise yeah. the council itself, the submission around anything like this is, is what's good for the council yeah. and Pippa and I are trying to add our 25 cent piece with the help of some of our other councils around yeah. what it looks like for us and Māori and Iwi and Hapu now, I've got to add all of them. Um, yeah, so we, we do have a good complementary of Māori helping when we do this stuff. Oh no, and I'm sure, and we're very thankful to have you and tip it at the table. Yeah, Otherwise right. we would not be represented at all. No. Hell no. Mm, thank you, Hannah. You know. With with the oh, yes. Oh sorry. Yep. Is that all right? Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you. Um right, so this slide summarizes the new entities and processes particularly relevant for Māori. Uh, those that I haven't already mentioned are the Limits and Targets Review Panel. Uh, if the National Planning Framework proposal contains limits or minimal level targets, the responsible minister must appoint a panel to advise on the extent to which those limits or targets basically are effective. 
uh, members of this panel uh, must have knowledge and experience on Mataronga Māori, amongst yeah. other things. Uh, iwi and Hapu committees, the committee formed by Iwi and Hapu in a region for uh, the purpose of A, agreeing with local authorities, the composition arrangements for the regional planning committee, and B, leading the process to determine the one or more Māori appointing bodies. Uh, Māori appointing bodies are bodies to be agreed by all iwi and hapu in the region to then appoint members onto the regional planning committee. And Just, engagement, sorry, sorry yes. Hannah, when you say region, you're talking Waikato region, eh? Waikato regional well, council. Each region eh? has to do this for themselves, but yes. This... If you look at Waikato, for instance, you look at the makeup of, of, of Waikato regional council and the different, the different, um, um, regions within that, you know, with the Huraki, Wakata Tainui, Tarawa, uh, you know, so are you saying, is this bill saying that each of those different regions can pick people? Is that what you're saying? Is um, that what this yes, is saying? Yes, that well, that's kind of what is implied, and that was raised as an issue in our submission. Yeah, because it could end up with an entity of, say, Tuwharetua, uh, uh, Tarawa, Matsai Natapawa, Wakata Tainui, uh, Hauraki, Rukawa, you name it. That yeah. could be the bill assumes that it will be easy to represent appointees. Um, and that was something we raised in our submission that we have um, a very large region with a very large number of iwi and hapu. And I think that it, well, it was, it's optimistic to assume that any type of representative appointing could happen. Um, well, you just all, all all quickly <laughs> to get members for tiny we walk up onto the three waters and this tiny rod you know so you 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 just have to ask her how, how easy that was and she'll tell you it's still a headache today yeah. <laughs> not just tiny almost a year now almost a year yeah. mm. and, and you, it's a stupid bill okay well, good um, luck to whoever is going to do this. As long as the Crown doesn't come to us and say, um, this is, this mm -hmm. is, we would like you to be on this for your iwi, you know, that, that's not going to mm -hmm. be either. Yeah, and as long as the bill's tried to leave the process up to Māori to decide for themselves, but I mean, that in a way presents its own issues because it's sort of asking uh, Māori to work through a process that wasn't designed by them, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I'm having a Māori organisation running in a white world. Absolutely. Well, that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, and that was an issue we raised in our submission was that these, this won't be an easy process. Um, I can't remember where I was up to. Um, I think it was engagement agreements. Um, like I mentioned, the regional planning committees are supposed to initiate engagement agreements with all Māori groups to agree and record how those Māori groups will be partic will participate in preparing a plan and how their participation will be funded by the committee. And the iwi statements of outcomes, I understand, can take whatever form iwi see fit and can essentially be existing iwi management plans. I have to uh, uh, and lastly, an iwi or hapu may also provide a statement on te oranga o te taio to the regional planning committee at any time for their, their consideration and decision making. Uh, this is just my last couple of slides. So the bill sets up a new freshwater allocation scheme. Uh, historically, resources such as freshwater have been allocated on a first in first served basis. Under the new bill, the allocation me method is changed to a merit-based approach that will focus on sustainability, equity, and efficiency. Uh, these parts of the legislation, we've said, require additional thinking to ensure that these three principles are well understood. Um, any other questions there? Or? I guess just in um, sort of the conversations around allocation. I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, the model Nam Matapono Kitewai, um, but it works alongside Pimano Te Wai. Um, 
I guess there's no reflection of this in here. Allocation, as you know, is sort of the area where Iwi and Hapu rights and interests sort of sit. There's been a sort of placeholder, as you know, Katsurana, to address that. But I guess <clears throat> what is WRC's current thinking and applying an allocation in the absence of Te Manotu as a mechanism, which is not embedded in legislation, but rather, um, so is allocation um, is is through uh, does WRC consider that Te Manotu is an applicable mechanism here? At the, moment, at, at the moment they do. So 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 at the moment the water allocation is one of my pet pet things that the yes. of table. Um but but this here it sounds like it's gonna take a lot of it away from us. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to um yeah, it's going but to decision making Yes, yeah. So so you know, like, like the, the three waters regime and the council, regional councils, um, we, we don't have a lot of, there's no, yeah. there's not a lot of input into that because we don't own infrastructure of, of fresh water. Our only thing to do with the fresh water is the allocation. Um, and we work already to the, the criteria of the Crown. But what happened with water care is what is where this has come from uh, because we push water care to the back and we push, and the fact that that the iwi complained about where they were taking it, how much they wanted. So, so this is how this came about in theory. Um, so I'd like to believe that going forward, nothing changes as far as the man of the buy is concerned, um, because I do believe what the regional council that does take that into effect. Um, hence why we've got a waiting list of people wanting water. You know, because uh, there, there's a, a barrier or area you can't go below when you're allocating water. And we started looking at the different avenues of allocation of water. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, I, I really like to believe with my hand on my heart that, that the allocation we're doing today is in correspondence with the amount of water. And remember that came up later, so we've made adjustments to suit, and adjusting to suit is ensuring that we're not over allocating anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. But going forward, I'm not sure what all this is because it looks like it's going to take it out of our hands anymore. Is that right, Hannah? Does this paper look it, it like it? It definitely can... does change. Well, it's proposed to change. Yeah. where the decision making lies the decision making for allocation will sit with the regional planning committee which is obviously quite a high level and the i know that there was there's definitely been a concern expressed about the perception that uh it's delegating its treaty obligations in respect of freshwater matters to regional planning committees and the proposal to address that is, is this freshwater working group, uh, which is consisting of Crown and Iwi Hapu appointees. And then its role is to make recommendations on freshwater allocation matters, including a process and framework for engagement. Um, and then that report then gets presented to the regional planning committee. So yes, it does change. Well, the proposal is to change where the decision making sits. When is that working group proposed to be set up? Well, Anna? the board hasn't been done yet. I mean, so is it would it be in sort of timing wise? There would definitely be timing associated with it. I can't remember quite um, without going back to the bill when when that how long there is to set up that group. Um, but I imagine that there would be a time limit on it. I think this bill, this bill hasn't gone through any readings yet, has it? Had? Select no, committee? no, it's still no. sitting. It's well, it's still it's sitting at select committee. committee now. Okay. They've they've heard submissions and are uh, deciding how to go forward from here. I, I, from memory, I'm actually thinking that the freshwater working group might need to is supposed to maybe be set up by the end of next year under the current proposal, which I mean sounds kind of quick. <laughs> so, um, Hannah, do you 
So, and um, excuse my ignorance, around the, um, so from the select committee, is it in its second, is it in its second reading, uh, second hearing? Is it? Um, I'm not is entirely sure. I just saw something in the news that said that the um, chair of the select committee is talking about sending it out for another round of consultation. Um, and that was just right. something I saw in the news. Is that because of all the submissions that they received? So they would have received a lot of black backlash. Um, oh, with absolutely. This. Yeah. And so they are taking it into consideration? Yeah, it sounds like it from what I saw okay. on the news. So this could all change? <laughs> could, yeah. Yeah, and so I guess my point is, <clears throat> is that, you know, we, you, we can only sort of... <clears throat> Council, I guess, can only work um, to a certain degree on, on what this is, but until the process is actually finished, and we're certain, and I think it's up to each uh, iwi to actually really push and say that, uh, you know, we, we will not accept it. And it isn't an election year, and we should be using that to our advantage mm. and saying to them, you know, <laughs> you do this and you're going to upset a lot of people. So, um, you know, there's some sort of strategic points here that I think we need to act upon and we don't have a lot of time um, and it, it feels as though everything that um, and I know that uh, Tiarawa River Iwi Trust and its affiliates won't be alone in saying that you've um, that they are not happy with um, with this outcome yeah. with what they're proposing here with this bill as it as it sits. So, so sorry oh. so in your submission did did you couldn't think towards this one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. it's just, a, and we did two A, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. Yeah, sorry, through um, Chair, Madam Chair. I think the big thing is that we all advocate through the different entities that we've got best that we can into the Hannah, but the reality is, is that um, the short time frame that we had, and it was over Christmas mm -hmm. to put the submission in, you mm -hmm. know, so. Sorry. Everyone had that break and, you know, whānau time mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it was really up to the councils to really listen to the workshops that, or, you know, um, iwi uh, and their different uh, entities on on getting that message across. And you say that now there could be a second reading or they've asked to go back out again. You know, again, how much is that going to, you know, going to kind of come across? Because this must be a, a nationwide. It's not just our region, because you look at our region, it's just... I you know, it just does not complement how they've come up with this formula because mm -hmm. it's such a huge, diverse region with a many hapu that we've got in here. How can you have a a six panel or, you know, whatever it is to decide on these uh, important matters? You know, especially allocation. When we, you know, an uh, entity like, like Topol uh, down a mighty river of, uh, you know, Waikato and then, you know, you even got Auckland taking allocation out of it. And that's how all this stuff, because the council was against it. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, a yeah, lot of, you know, a, a great discussion, I yeah. think, but I think for the, probably for the interest of time, um, you know, as yeah, we probably will need to um, push through and, you know, allow you to, to complete your, um, your presentation, but you know, as you can see, it's very dear to our heart, and and um, it it really reinforces that we can't take our bo uh, eyes off the ball, mm -hmm. you know, and and really wherever we get an input, we need to um, and be that from our our chairs, um, really, <clears throat> and whether or not that's that's as a collective saying that you know we are not we are not happy with this and um, we want some action, and just reminding mm -hmm. them, you know, they yeah. they will. With this election year, they will want. They won't want any um, disruptions. They won't want any bad publicity. That kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, absolutely. And this is my last slide, so I will be very quick. Um, and what we were, what we were just talking about, really lends to what I was going to say, which is that supposedly under this new bill, we've got 10 years until the Resource Management Act is fully phased out. And, you know, we've thought that that is even an optimistic time frame. Um, the work that regional council is currently doing relating to freshwater planning and the national policy statement for highly productive land, et cetera, that's not going away. It's business as usual for now until told otherwise. 
but we are obviously really cognizant of this potential upcoming change and starting to think about how these new entities and processes might work in the Waikato or how they want, might not. And obviously things may keep evolving through this select committee process. Um, no conf confirmation that there will be a second round of conf consultation yet. Um, but if there is, I very much doubt that this bill will be passed by the election or like the initial mm -hmm. thought was. Um, but yes, we're re very keen to keep an open channel of communication about this stuff and um, hear your perspectives on it all. So thanks everyone very much for your time. Um, thank you, Hannah. Um, what would be really helpful, Hannah, is if we could receive this, if you could circulate the presentation, please. If you could Absolutely. Send it and then uh, Joe will disseminate from there. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, it's just about 12 o'clock and we just actually have to... Um, Oh, sorry. Maybe I'll accept the report first. No uh, by uh, Stu, Councillor mm -hmm. Newby, and second by. Thank you. Sorry, taking my little while to get. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> taking me a little while to get my head off the uh, co-papa that we've just been discussing. But um, anyway, we we're getting close to twelve o'clock, and we either need to take a break for ten minutes or um, vote to continue our hearing into this finished it hopefully around 12, 12.30. Um, I think we're running, running quite close to uh, mm -hmm. where we should be. Mm -hmm. So what would what would you like to do? Oh, I'm not fussed. I'm just sitting here. If you think you've finished your time, go for it. Carry on. Yeah. It'll take five minutes at least, go to the toilet and then come back and carry on. So I okay. There has to be a break for a minimum of 10 minutes. Okay, so <laughs> you're either taking five minutes or 10 minutes. Right, that's all we need. Fair point, thank you. Thank you.